Hi everyone, I'm Rob Blaine. I'm from uh, Genesis. I work for Genesis and I'm the solution lead for our solutions related to artificial intelligence for Europe. Um, I'm from the UK, as you may be able to tell, um, so sorry for not speaking Latvian. Um, but coming from the UK, um, I do know what it's like to be in a, a bit of a, a rainy country who, that's experiencing a heat wave, so um, I'm really happy to be here with you. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you really about um, practical use cases for artificial intelligence in the customer service environment. Um, I think in the world um, we are seeing some really amazing things happening with artificial intelligence, but it can also be kind of scary. So in my interview during the break I was asked, you know, do we need a kill switch for bots to stop them killing us in 20 years time? Um, and many people also worry that we're heading towards what they call the singularity, which is the moment in time when artificial intelligence surpasses human intelligence. And I don't think there, I think there are reasons to be worried, right? And I think the reason that we worry is that we know artificial intelligence is going to change the world, but we don't know how it's going to change the world yet. Um, but what we do know, for example, is it's going to make a huge change to the way wealth is created and what work means. So imagine if Uber just didn't need human drivers for its cars. Or imagine if Apple didn't need humans working in its factory. Imagine how much more money they would make and imagine what that would mean for us humans. Um, just a, a couple of examples of really scary smart things I've seen happening with AI in the last couple of years. Um, we've seen uh, machine learning algorithms that can analyze Rembrandt's paintings um, and pass those learnings into a 3D printer to create new Rembrandts from scratch. We've seen um, artificial lip syncing ne uh, networks making fake news. So for example, analyzing all of Obama's um, weekly speeches and using those to create new speeches uh, that are fake. And I think everybody's heard of IBM Watson. One of the first use cases of IBM Watson was using machine learning to analyze scans. And eventually, it was able to diagnose cancer, in some cases, better than medical professionals. But we've also seen some really stupid things. I just picked out another couple of examples. We've seen um, a security robot drown itself in a pond in Washington. We've seen uh, Inspirobot. Inspirobot was released on the web, and it was supposed to um, analyze the web and learn um, inspiring quotes and pair them with inspiring, inspiring images. But it kind of took a, a sinister turn, and it came up with quotes like, keep panicking, and try to tell yourself that you're horrible. And then finally, I think um, probably everybody's heard of Microsoft Tay. Tay was a bot that Microsoft released uh, on Twitter in 2016. And Tay learned to communicate with humans by um, trying to understand what they said to her. And unfortunately, humans um, abused Tay, and she quickly became um, a Nazi racist and had to be turned off within a day, never to return. Right. But I'm going, some I'm going somewhere with this. Um, is artificial intelligence a replacement for humans? Um, not yet, right? Artificial in I may have sort of chosen those examples a bit carefully, but where artificial intelligence worked really well was when it was focused on a really sp uh, specific application and where it had plenty of data to be able to train itself to be good at that application. And where it didn't work, um, it was where it was exposed to just a huge amount of unstructured data with very little guidance and then things went wrong. So, no, I don't think artificial intelligence is ready to replace humans, but it can be there to um, automate, for example, like simple routine tasks. Um, and, but we still need humans there for when things get complex um, or when there's um, the emotional component involved, like when a customer is making a complaint, is upset about something. Um, but artificial intelligence is not just about bots, though. Um, in recent years, advances in technology has meant that um, the kind of machine learning algorithms that in the past we could only use to analyze historical data can now be used in real time to make predictions. Um, and that means that any time we used to um, create a business rule, any, any type of decision um, in, the, in the customer service area, we can use uh, machine learning to improve those decisions. So for example, choosing who the best agent is. or choosing when to engage with the customer. And uh, yeah, those are what I'm going to give you a couple of examples of right now. Uh, the first one is predictive engagement. 
Um, so predictive engagement is about who you engage as a, as a customer and when. So I think a lot of organizations struggle um, to use all of the data that they have access to um, in an actionable way. And that's where predictive engagement use cases come in. Um, they allow you to determine um, when a customer, the right moment to reach out for a customer. So for example, when a customer uh, might be about to make a purchase and is a really hot, is a hot lead, or when a customer might be having um, a problem and you need to reach out to them to solve the problem. Um, and it does that by analyzing customers' behavior on the, on the web and creating a predictive algorithm. Um, it also allows you to attribute what, what customers do on the web to your sales and marketing campaigns. And uh, the way it does this is by yeah, predicting customer behavior. Um, it uses machine learning algorithms um, to analyze all the customer data that you have and come up with an accurate um, predictive model that allows you to predict that moment of customer need. And we've had um, some great results with customers who have been using this. They've been able to um, improve customer service KPIs like NPS. They've had huge reductions in the amount it costs to generate leads. And they've also had um, great results in conversion rates as well. So that's one use case where we can use machine learning just to, and predictive algorithms just to improve the decisions that we would have made in the past. Next one is predictive routing. So if predictive engagement is about who I engage and when, predictive routing is about choosing the best customer service representative to solve a customer problem. Um, so if you think about how um, routing in a contact center works today, we spend a lot of time creating business rules that allow us to map uh, the customer and his contact reason to um, a group of agents or a skill, right? But once we've done that, there are probably, you know, 50, 100, maybe more agents who have that skill. And we usually just send the customer interaction to the agent who's been ready the longest amount of time. Predictive routing changes all that. It uses a predictive model um, to, um, on all of the historical data that organizations have about customers, about interactions, and about the agents that work for them. Um, yeah, to create a predictive model that we can use in real time to choose the best agent for that specific customer and that specific problem to optimize business KPIs like NPS, like revenue. And um, if I talk about one of our customers who's been using predictive routing, they've ha also had great results. The first use case they decided to try to go for was optimizing um, net promoter score. No, sorry, first contact resolution. And they gained um, about a 4% increase in first contact resolution in their contact center by using predictive routing, just by changing the order that we route customers to agents, to the best, one, best agent for the customer, instead of um, just randomly the longest agent available. But by, by optimizing one um, customer service KPI, like first contact resolution, they also saw a side effect. They saw benefits in net promoter score, and they also saw um, average handle time reduced by about 4% as well. So just by focusing on one contact center um, customer experience KPI, you can really bring up others as well. After that, they decided to focus on more of a sales use case, and uh, they wanted to focus on reducing customer churn. So they are a telco in Europe, which is a very saturated market. It costs them a lot to gain a new customer. So they wanted to reduce the number of customers that leaves them. And by using um, um, the predictive routing use case, they were able to reduce churn by over 2%, uh, which just for a group of 150 agents resulted in millions of euros of, sa of savings for them a per year. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we come to uh, chatbots. So I think there's been um, a huge explosion um, related to chatbots in the last year or two. Everybody's talking about chatbots. There are a huge number of vendors. But for me, chatbots is just kind of one side of it, and maybe even like the least important side. I think we really need to look at how we um, expose those same technologies that we use in chatbots on the voice channel, because voice is still the biggest channel by far that our customers use. Um, and I think as we move into the future, um, people are going to be less wanting to type and more be being wanting to just talk. So being able to um, make those technologies available on the voice channel as well um, gives real benefits. And I think the, the difference between um, a cognitive IVR or a voice bot and the traditional IVRs that we use when we contact um, call centers um, is, is quite huge because um, 
they actually, you know, they're much less complex to set up than a traditional natural, natural language IVR. You just need to train them uh, with examples. Um, and they also self-learn, so they improve themselves um, over time. I think there are several benefits you can gain by implementing bots in your organization. So, of course, there is the obvious one. There is like cost reduction. If I automate customer interactions, then I don't have to uh, send them to a human agent, and that's cheaper. But bots are also available um, 24 hours a day to solve customer problems. And when they know how to solve a problem, when they've been trained on it, uh, they can solve those problems really quickly. Um, so that's great. Um, I think it also imp improves the um, engagement of your employees because if bots are handling like, kind of simple routine questions, then that frees up employees to handle more complex tasks and more valuable tasks. And I, I, I think it's key though, and I, I see a lot of customers starting to request this now, they don't just want um, a tool that designs uh, a chatbot, they want one central um, AI powered tool that will allow them to design dialogues across all different channels once and deploy them across those channels very easily. Um, I think that's really important to be able to do this too, otherwise you end up spending a lot of effort on doing everything multiple times. So those are the use cases that we're focusing on um, at the moment in, in Genesis. Um, we have a, a platform that we call Kate that we build all of these use cases on. So Kate enables services, um, has data models, and the uh, machine learning algorithms behind those models. Um, we have predictive engagement to determine who and when we should reach out to a customer. We have predictive routing to determine the best agent to solve a customer problem to optimize KPIs. And then, of course, we have um, automation. So we have voice and chatbots, and that's, that's how we answer customer questions. And we're looking at adding more and more use cases to this platform in time. And I, as I said, I think you can use artificial intelligence every time you make a decision. So for example, we could have use cases where um, we help agents to solve customer problems using AI. We could, um, when we're doing workforce management and scheduling, we can use artificial intelligence to predict how many agents we need and with the, what different skills they require. Um, so, I, and I, I think I would just kind of encourage you when you are figuring out your AI strategy for your organization to think about those practical use cases that are really going to give you um, a return on investment. Because I see a lot of organizations at the moment going, we need an AI strategy, we need a bot, but they're not really thinking about what they want to do with that and the benefit they're going to get. So for example, if you do want to have a bot, I'd say think about it pragmatically. Um, look at the top reasons that customers contact your organization figure out which of those are the easiest to automate, and there you've got your business case right there for implementing a bot, and you know you're gonna get a good return on investment from, from it. When you try to do um, everything with uh, a bot, then you end up spending a lot of money and not really necessarily achieving what you wanted to achieve. Um, so that's uh, the message I would like to leave you with.